Hey, welcome to the Infinity Rose podcast, the only podcast that is perfectly balanced as all things should be. I'm your host, Max Wunder, here today with two other of our Infinity Bros of our six Rotating Bros cast. First, it's the other host with the most, Infinity Bro, Isaac. Isaac, how are you? I'm doing great. It's Thursday morning. We're having an AM recording. I feel like we're more put together on our AM recordings, like we're, we're cohesive, and then our night podcast just get off the rails like bonkers completely i think the best content comes from the night ones i think the best insight and reviews come from the am ones that's that's a good way to put it yeah and speaking of those it's nighttime for him because he works overnights infinity bro zane zane how you doing i'm doing great happy to be here happy to you know represent the am the the good side of the infinity bros and (laughs) not the uh the dgen night crew who who would have thought that Zane would be representing the the AM side of the <laughs> podcast? Zane's the agent of light on our network, <laughs> which is I mean, like if you go through and like pick out all of the AM podcasts that we've done, Zane's on almost every single one of them. I, I think yeah. he maybe maybe not on like one or two that you and I have done together, Max. But like, who, who would have thought? Not me. Well, it's funny because <laughs> like I prefer in a perfect world I do AM ones because then. I'll go to work, and if I have meetings, like the other day, I had a meeting canceled at lunch, so I edited the podcast and got it out right away. I love it. Perfect. And I'm like, whereas at night, it's like I start my next day, and I get my mind on my work stuff, and then it gets put in my on my workflow, just gets pushed to the back versus if I do it in the morning. So I, I really I love a good AM podcast. You didn't come here to hear about my workflow, though. You came here to hear about The Mandalorian. Season 3, Episode 1. Big deal, man. This show, we've been waiting for a good long time since we saw our dear friends Mando and Grogu leave with Luke Skywalker. I'm sorry, Grogu leave with Luke Skywalker at the end of season two. And if you watched the book of Boba Fett, you had some things filled in between there. You saw some extra fun characters. And if you're like me and you're not the biggest Star Wars person, you still are pretty pumped for this. It appears that Mando craze is everywhere. I was at a meeting yesterday. And somebody dropped that Mando was back. Somebody that I'd never watches this kind of stuff is how I would talk about it. And she looks at her husband and goes, oh, we got to watch that tonight, Mark. We got to watch that tonight. It was like 9 o'clock at night. And they were like planning a 10 p.m. Mando watch. So pretty exciting stuff. Isaac, talk to me about your review of season one and season two of Mando coming into it. Where are you sitting? What's your hype level of it on a scale of one to six? Hype level is a six out of six. I know, uh, Zane, you guys both talked about, you know, just kind of your expectations coming into it uh, on the last episode of the Infinity Bros podcast. But I mean, this is a fantastic show. I mean, it, I think the season two of Mandalorian won our, I don't remember what year it was, 2021 Stan Lee for best TV show. Like, we all absolutely love the show on the Infinity Bros podcast. So I believe it swept the number one spot across yeah, the Yeah, it was, a, it was a clean sweep. Like, everybody had it number one. It was unanimous. I believe to date it's the only true Infinity Snap I can think of. Everybody has a gripe with something aside from Endgame and Mandalorian. Yeah. Right. Which is really those are Those are definitely our... Uh, very highly thought of properties on sure. the Infinity Bros podcast for sure. But yeah, six out of six hype coming into it. Like absolutely can't wait for the rest of the season. It was a fantastic first episode. I, I want to, we'll get into it in a second. But yeah, my hype was off the charts, man. I, I absolutely love any, I, and Zane and I both are pretty like deep cut Star Wars fans. So like any Star Wars content, which Zane and I are probably the only ones on the podcast still watching bad batch right now too. (laughs) any star Wars content that comes out. We're there for, but this is like high tier. I mean, like you said, this is the common people's show. Like everybody is watching this show, not just star Wars fans. And there's a reason for that because it's, it's fantastic. It's exciting and engaging and everybody is, is hyped for it. You can hear Zane's thoughts on last week's episode, episode 156. I'm not going to ask him that again because I don't want to know. It's fair. I don't want to hear it, and you don't want to hear it. So we're going to dive into this episode. It will be a complete spoiler review. We're not going to give a review of non-spoilers. It's 30 minutes, people. If you want to go watch it, go watch it and come back. We rate things on a scale of 1 to 6. We're going to go ahead and put the bumper for that rating scale right here. Here on the Infinity Bros Podcast, everything is ranked from a 0 to 6 point scale. 
Zero meaning horrible, and six meaning absolutely excellent. If all of the Infinity Bros rank something a six, it gets an Infinity Snap. And then additionally, we're going to spoil this show top to bottom. We're going to spoil things from Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett, excuse me. And then we are going to spoil things from season one and season two of Mandalorian. I think there's a chance, too, that you two are going to talk about other Star Wars properties here. So this is a universal spoiler warning. If you don't want anything spoiled in the Star Wars universe to date, I'm just giving you the warning right now because you're going to need it. So this is your Star Wars episode one, season three, Mandalorian. Spoiler bumper. This is Prepare Yourself An Infinity Bros. Prepare Yourself Spoiler <laughs> Warning It's been a while since we've seen this, Zane. I'm very excited. Pedro Pascal is back with Katie Sackhoff, Emily Shallow, Swallow, excuse me, Carl Weathers, uh, obviously our friend Grogu is back. And I'm trying to think anybody returning that we want to acknowledge. No, nobody else is returning that we need to acknowledge. Written by John Favreau. George Lucas getting some writing credit on this episode was exciting to see. He's back. I, I love how Filoni and um and Favreau really do a great job of sticking with him. Um, it, it just it felt like when Disney made that transaction years ago that it was like, oh, he's done with it, but Filoni is such a purist. Uh, did you guys hear about the interview the other day about Filoni interview uh, Filoni directing the final scene in Rogue One with with Darth Vader? Yeah, I saw a TikTok about that. This is bananas. I'll include a link in the show notes to. I believe it's Freddie Prince Jr. that says this, but Filoni goes in to watch this scene where Darth Vader has this his his lightsaber appear and proceeds to kill everybody in the room. And Filoni sees the first cut of it and asks them where they got an Italian. And they go, what do you mean? How did you know that? And he goes, well, he uses his hands to speak more than Darth Vader does. I mean, that is the attention to detail that Dave Filoni brings to this. He even commented how the buttons were apparently wrong on Darth Vader, too, which I don't know how you messed that up personally. But here we are. Welcome to 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 the 21st, 22nd century. I don't know. What century are we in, Zane? You tell me. Uh, yeah. The We're still in the 21st? 18th. 18th. Yeah. This is direct by Rick. By Rick. How do I mispronounce Rick? <laughs> it's it's just a Max thing. It's, you know, Rick can't stop Fumua. it at this point. <laughs> Rick Fumua. I actually looked up the pronunciation of his last name, which makes this even hilarious. <laughs> I mispronounced <laughs> Rick, and I pronounced it Rick. <laughs> oh, Pedro Pascal, we talked about them already. Um, we've talked about what we're going to talk about too long. Let's do this. Zane, I want you to hear you from you first. What is your spoiler review? Broad strokes. We'll get into details of the episode, but right out the gate, episode one of season three of the Mandalorian. All right. Right out the gate. Like I thought this was a fantastic way to jump back into our season three. Um, it's a solid premiere. It sets up everything that you need to do. It gives you some action. It revisits where you've been in season one and two, kind of reestablishes the port there. You get, um, oh, why am I blanking on Carl Weathers' character's name? Um, Grief Cargo. Grief Cargo. You got him kind of established what he has in the city. He's cleaned the area up. So it's kind of united or, you know, you've seen how that's kind of come from season one and two. And it's gave you a little bit of the insight of where they're going on season three. And it's got some action. It's got some humorous scenes in it. And it's got a couple of um, connections that I picked up on from other properties, which, you know, you kind of knew was going to happen because you got it's Filoni and that's just how he does things. But just the little things that it has me excited to see where we're going. So yeah, it's, it was a great start. It's a good, uh, caught up get up to speed from everything that's happened in the past and it uh yeah kind of sets you on the path that did i miss your rating what's your rating it was six out of six it, it was great and you're watching everything zane you've seen andor you've seen book of boba fett you are in the middle uh, or at least processing through the recent shows of bad batch and all these other side shows that are coming out so you're very caught up on the star wars lore we trust your understanding of that. Isaac is as well. I'll speak on behalf of the guy that's not watching any of this stuff. 
I haven't even seen Andor, and I went back yesterday to watch the Book of Boba Fett episodes. I am going to watch Andor, people. It's on my list. I just haven't gotten around to it. It's a travesty. I'm still even your father has watched. Dude, my Andor. dad is on top of Star Wars stuff. <laughs> he is on top of it. He would be a better person on this podcast than me for sure. <laughs> I'm just in for all mankind right now, and I have to be locked in to do oh, it. And it just, oh, I understand, actually, because that show is... It's dense. That show is, like, mentally exhausting to watch. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, for so, sure. So good. Se- I'm on season three right now. I'm really enjoying it. Um, So good. No, my, from my perspective, I, I, I agree with you, Zine. I'm not going to give it a six. This isn't the best Mandalorian episode I've ever seen. Um, I wasn't bored, but there were slow parts in this. I would give this a five out of six. I think it's a strong episode. I think it's... There's probably connection pieces that I don't understand and that I'm okay with that. And I've always been okay with that in this show. But the opening scene really sets the tone. I really, after um, Mando comes in and shoots that giant creature, I went, let's go. Like, that was me. I was like so pumped about it. I really liked the intro of it. I really enjoy Pedro Pascal. You can check out 156. We just talked about Zane and I. We were talking about The Last of Us. We do the reviews of that show as well. And I just really like watching him. I'm amazed at how they can make this character not give me any facial features, yet I still can understand what he's feeling at all times. Really enjoy that. And Filoni does a great job here again. I'm giving it a five out of six, which on our scale sounds like a bad rating, but it's still a very strong episode. This is a very strong show. My expectation is that it will get better every week. I'm thrilled to see Grogu and Mando back together. I really liked seeing how that happened in the book of Boba Fett. Other people on this show have criticized the Book of Boba Fett zine. I'm actually going to go back and watch it after watching the few episodes I saw. And I I'm was actually pretty shocked at how much I was like, this was really good. I really liked this. I don't know what the hype is negatively about Book of Boba Fett. So well, we'll and, uh, like I brought it up to you, the back half of Book of Boba Fett is significantly better than the front half. Yeah. So I'm going to go back and watch it. Sure. And I'm sorry to those that are really purists that are upset that I have seen it. All right, Isaac, let's go to another purist here. What are your thoughts? I am going to come out of the gate and give it a 5.5 out of 6. I thought it was a fantastic episode. I think you hit it on the head, Max. Like, it's not the best Mandalorian episode ever, which is why I didn't I didn't give it a 6. But solid intro to this season. I Man, I had a big dumb grin across my face during the whole episode because it's just like so good to finally be watching this again. I was just like, yes, we're back. I can't wait to see, you know, where we go with this. I think there was like some, I wouldn't even say some gripes, but some interesting choices that they made transitioning from season two, Boba Fett in the middle, and then season three that we'll get into in a little bit, but like, as a, as a, you know, starting episode for season three, fantastic. And I'm so excited to be watching the show again. So the armor and a group of Mandalorians hold this ceremony to start. They're inducting this young boy to the tribe as a non educated, uh, filthy casual. Was I led to believe that I was thinking, am I, am, was I intentionally bamboozled into thinking this was the origin of Mando? Like, did you guys get bamboozled there too? Or was there a connection I'm missing there? I was wondering that um, when they started because, well, first of all, when she's hammering the the helmet right away, I thought she was making a little helmet for Grogu. And I was like, yes, <laughs> Grogu Mandalorian armor. Let's go. Mm-hmm, <laughs> but then mm-hmm. it was like bigger. And I was like, oh, man, it's it's not Grogu helmet. But but yeah, I kind of thought that, too. But then she's wearing the same exact stuff that she's wearing in the previous season. So I was kind of like, mm, maybe this is current day. You can't really tell. I, I don't know if they're. I don't think they're trying to bamboozle you, but it certainly is kind of like, where, where are we going with this? Initially? Sure. Apparently this same actor has credit in the book of Boba Fett um, playing in other episodes. So that was the question. That was why I asked the question. He plays the character named Ragnar. Ragnar is his title in this, but in the book of Boba Fett, he plays a Tuscan kid in the background. I don't know if either of you remembered him being there or not. Didn't know that until you just said that. So Some deep connection that somebody out there cares about that. I don't. You really wouldn't right know now. because the Tuscans wear all their yeah, headgear. If, so, but that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I, I, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, I, I don't. That can't really make sense because like Tuscans wouldn't remove their like wraps and stuff. So you can't be playing the same. Character. Just the same actor is basically all it is. I just was more curious if there was some connection from Boba Fett that I was missing, maybe in the last episode. 
they picked up the kid. I don't know. I Interesting, though. Question. Uh, he's getting inducted. The ceremony is interrupted when an aquatic monster attacks the Mandalorians, and they fight back but are soon overpowered. And our guy Mando arrives, killing the creature with his starfighter. I love the starfighter. I loved the Boba Fett stuff with Starfighter. It was a little slow in building the Starfighter. Now I'm rating Boba Fett here. But I, I really like that as his new ship. And I love how Grogu can just be on the top of that little port up there. I love it. So good. My hands went right in the air. This is six out of six. Primetime Mandalorian. This is what you're coming here for from this. Zane, anything you'd add to the scene that you loved when you watched it? No, I mean, it's a giant monster being fought by Mandalorians. It's sweet. It's awesome. Yeah, you none. you yeah. give me a giant monster and anyone's fighting it. It's it, that's it. I'm sold. Zane. Okay. Side <laughs> note: Did you watch the newest episode of Bad Batch yet? I have not. I'm going to watch okay. it after. Get this to episode. that. Get to that today because this is. I'm not going to say anymore, but you're gonna you're gonna yeah. like it. So okay, good. Anyways, there's really not enough anything to dislike about this. Episode. That's why I have a hard such a hard time with some of these shows like Last of Us Two. Like the filmmaking is so good. How can I rate it less than a six out of six? Even though it wasn't like my favorite episode of all time, I have a hard time like not giving it such a good rating because there's nothing wrong with the episode. Like it's, it's, it's a great episode. It's just like, it didn't get me like jumping out of my seat yelling. Like I have in, in some previous episodes. Here's the other part too. Season two ends with one of the best television scenes of all time. Right. That's yeah. our problem here. Our problem is, is it's the same problem Marvel has right now. We've talked about this on other shows there. The, the bar is so high. How can you, how can you go past it? We have to accept as an audience that there will be plateaus before we can get back to that high. And I think Mandalorian is a fine sh- example of that's okay. As a TV series too, it's, it's hard. Like you can't just keep elevating every single episode because how high can you go? You know, like, again, like you said, we ended on such a high note that it's really hard to get to that level, let alone topping it every single episode. Like, it's just not, it's just not possible. We get to go back to see Carl Weathers, who just is a joy in this show. It is just so wonderful every time to see him. Uh, We go back. uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped my major part. The armor confirms that if the minds of Mandalore still exist, that our guy can go become a Mandalorian again. I love this storyline, guys. I this because this was the question at the end of last season we had was how does the Mandalorian season three work? And that's why the book of Boba Fett had to happen. I'm interested to hear if you thought that was a mistake that they did those episodes there, Isaac. You kind of alluded to that earlier, but I, I, I really like this storyline. I like that it's a it's a hero struggle. We've we've kind of resolved now who Grogu is. He's made his choice of his future he'd like to do. We know Luke Skywalker and the Jedi are still there, and they can do more things there. It's also in a time period where Luke doesn't have a defined set of things he's done that aren't canon, excuse me. I'm sure Zane's yep, look at them pushing the go- glasses up, ready to tell me there's <laughs> he's stuff he's doing. Ready to um actually you just right now. <laughs> I was so prepared for the well actually there. But I I love this. This leaves a lot of flexibility for us to do the things that Mandalorian does well, which is explore traverse all of star wars lore and there can be filler episodes that are fun and just side quests and i think filler episodes in this show are important to enhance smaller characters for example now we can lead into carl weathers oh actually hold on i'm gonna stop i'm i'm bantering too much isaac and zane what are your thoughts on this overarching narrative now from this season are you pleased with it is this gonna tickle your fancy are you do you feel like this is a good arc to go zane let's start with you It's something that, how do I put it? Like, it's not super in depth. It's not a, like, it's kind of that setup of, it seems like that low stakes kind of mission that kind of has the mystery to it. Like, hey, you're going to go bathe in the water, you know, to redeem yourself. And you're slowly going to unlock a deeper mission that continues throughout season three. Yes. Like, it's not the set. You don't have the, hey, here's the boss. We're going to go through all these episodes, fight the boss at the end. This is a, we're going to go on a journey and you're going to get more and more picture revealed that it, you know, it started out simple, but it's going to become a much larger thing as it goes on. Yeah. So, okay. Here's, here's my issue <clears throat> with this whole like timeline thing. Uh, so at the end of episode, or season two, we get this very, very fantastic emotional episode with, um, you know, Din Djurin, 
giving up Grogu. And then Boba Fett just goes and undoes that in two and a half episodes. And I, I don't look, look, I think the Mando episodes and book of Boba Fett are the best episodes. Like it's, clear like you said zane that those the last half of book book of boba fett is the best part of that show but to me that that kind of undoes the emotional impact that that last episode has because why why did he give up grogu if he's just going to get him back like immediately and that that leads into the season like it would have been cool and again yeah, obviously, I don't have a look behind the the screen or anything. I don't know what's happening this season. But why not? If you're going to get Grogu back, why not make it a thread in this season? Because then you'd have a w- much bigger payoff than just having him the whole season. You know, I, I just don't really understand why they went to the trouble to go give Grogu up if he's just getting get him back immediately. So that that was my like kind of thoughts about about Boba Fett like love those episodes love that Mando shows up and you know helps up Boba Fett and love seeing Grogu again honestly like that that's all really cool but it just kind of lessened the emotional impact so starting out like and I'm I'm a sucker for Grogu Grogu's like the the cute character that like my wife was walking by and she's watched like parts of the Mandalorian with me. She hasn't sat down and watched the whole thing, but she saw Grogu and she stopped and watched like you, you can't not watch Grogu on screen. Like he's just, he's one of the best parts of the show. So it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to say that it was a mistake to bring Grogu back because he's, Awesome. No, you you're not saying don't bring Grogu back. You're saying have him be in another spot and have that be his own arc. And I, I think that's a fair again. I don't know what's happening the rest of the season. It might have been better to have a thread with a bigger payoff of Grogu coming back to Dinger. I think something. if you're writing laws for this show, one of the laws is that they have to be together the whole time. I think that that is kind of what Filoni has made his bed and said it. He's like, if, if there's a law with this, this is how this has to be. And I, I, I don't necessarily – I actually disagree with you. I, I agree with you that it did lessen the stakes of the episode. But after watching those episodes of Boba Fett, I felt filled in. I felt like I got that transitionary period. I felt like they did the work that was required. And and there were stakes. The stakes were Grogu was making efforts and growth as a Jedi. It was evident he was going to be like Yoda. But he made the choice to go back to Mando. And Mando went to – he took a journey to go see Grogu. Dropped off some stuff and said, you know what? I can't do that to him. I'm going to leave him finally. This is all culminating, and we're not going to spend a ton of time today talking about this, but this will all culminate in something big, Isaac. This is an Avengers-level film coming down the line. My gut tells me they're going to try to work Luke Skywalker again back in a full-fledged movie to get people back in the seats and butts in the seats. And I think Filoni is is building to that with Ahsoka and with I, – I think there's – even we could potentially see Obi Wan Kenobi in some ways be part of that as a Force Ghost or whatever. I, I, I think there's ways that Filoni can do everything he's doing to culminate together. But yeah, I this is a long game. I think that's the reason they did it. What they did, Isaac. It's interesting you mentioned that because there's been stuff floating around about how, um, and I don't know if this is Filoni specifically, but they were talking to some of the showrunners of, of Mandalorian and kind of, I don't know, to me, the makings of a good show, a good TV show is that you have a vision for the whole show. You know, when what's happening on the timeline, you know, Hey, we're going to go five seasons and be done because that's when you get the full picture. But there, there was somebody and I, I would have to look up, who said this, there was somebody that was behind the scenes, the the Mandalorian that said they don't have a vision for stopping this show. And that, that was like, when I heard that, I was like, that's a little concerning to me because like at this point, are you just going to draw that on so long that the show becomes irrelevant? Like so many shows that we know were great right off the bat, two, three seasons, fantastic. And then they just, keep like I think Lost was was uh I know you love Lost Max but I think Lost was a perfect show to example that great first two three four episodes or seasons 
And then it just kind of kept dwindling every season to me. And I, I hope that doesn't happen here. And I don't, again, I don't remember who said that. Maybe it was just somebody who, you know, doesn't know, uh, is not in the writer's room and doesn't know that Filoni has a vision. But to me, I was like, oh, gosh, if that's the case, I, I'm getting a little worried about the future of The Mandalorian. But I'm along for the ride either way. Like, this is going to be a fantastic I trust show. Filoni. Filoni's made this property relevant to me. That, that enough says to me. That, that, yeah, it's, it's relevant because of that. Zane, anything to add? You haven't spoken in a while. Forgive us. I, I feel like this is more along the lines of like, maybe at that time they didn't have a complete vision, but I feel like this is something that as they've gotten their feet going, that it's going to build into something that the picture they're trying to paint. Um, the thing that sticks kind of in the back of my mind is like, I know a lot of people in it, became somewhat divisive and just everything that happened with the movies and how the movies panned out. And I think people got kind of like burned out on that. Cause you're just like, Oh, it's Palpatine back. Oh, it's Skywa. It's, it's the same stuff getting rehashed. And so part of me, even when it kind of first started, I always felt like this is an opportunity. And with Filoni at the helm of getting, you know, reestablishing kind of your main lore of the star Wars universe that isn't going through Skywalker and Palpatine that basically it, it's kind of like the quick circumvent. And then you can go from there. Cause personally, I feel like you bring in and which I think, you know, further in with this, like you bring in Ezra Bridger, then you have Kane and Jarrus as the, your force ghost. You have the rest of the crew. You got, you know, the rest of the crew of the ghosts from Rebels. You know, Harrison Dula. You got Sabine Wren. You got all these different pieces from different parts that you can continue this main Star Wars story that deviates from Skywalker and Pal- Palpatine. Like, you have your heroes. You have your villains. You have so much more that you can actually kind of break away from that original movie mold. And you can kind of branch out. And I, that's something I would love to see. Maybe Floney has a vision for of we're going to, you know, the movies had their own thing. We're going to kind of kind of little oopsie date, you know, curve around it and keep going with it. All right. Now let's get to grief. Carga. I talked about it a lot earlier, but now I want to talk about it. He's now the high magistrate. I thought they did a great job of writing off Gina Carano in that. Uh, saying they have a new vacated position of Marshall, which was great. Side comment, she has blocked us on Twitter. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> she blocks yes. everybody on Twitter, apparently. But yeah. that's our claim to fame. I think if you were writing a review for the Infinity Bros podcast, you would write, Gina Carano blocked us. <laughs> six six out of six stars. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, no, I, I really liked that. It was smooth and seamless. Um, uh the Mandalorian helps Karga stop a group of pirates who have been attacking citizens at schools in Navarro. Just a uh, like the Western vibe this show gives off so much just is so good. It how just like you you gonna do this? No, are you gonna do this? And then you get Carl Weathers uh, putting his hand waving his hand over the gun. I love that stuff. Uh, and then IG Eleven, they're they're trying to rebuild him. I like I like this arc. Taika Waititi does a little bit of work with this character. In this scene, uh, and, and uh, apparently the director said the scene where he goes online and comes back to his default mode, that is a homage to the Terminator, uh, allegedly. So I thought that was a nice little touch from Filoni there. I thought that was really cool. And I, I liked that whole I liked that whole scene. I loved the scene with the little what were the little creatures called? The, the Anzellans. The Anzellans. So good, man. That's like. That's Star Wars. Star Wars, it's so funny. I want to touch on that because, and you mentioned the pirate scene too, that and the Enzelans. This is, like you said, that's Star Wars, man. Just seeing these like different like races and creatures and stuff like that all being a part of this and interacting. Like the pirates, man, the pirates are just perfect Star Wars pirates. Like just random like alien dudes and races that like all come together and they're, they're space pirates. And then we get later on in the episode too. And the dude literally is like a vast, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he's a space pirate. Like this is fantastic. But yeah, like the perfect blend of like practical and CGI that I think Star Wars is really well known for. Like, you know, we go back to the original um, trilogy and 
the practical effects of the aliens and the different races and stuff like that is just classic Star Wars. And I think they did a fantastic job of incorporating that into into this episode with those pirates and the seeing Grogu try to pick up an Anzellan was great too. Yeah, that was so funny. Well, well, that's why I love seeing the Anzellans back because it's like, well, in Rise of Skywalker, the Anzellan in that is Babu Freak, and like Babu Freak was my favorite part. You just stole my next point. I was like, it was, was was that <laughs> is that Babu Freak? Because like that was yes. a great part of that it's possible. That so well, good. like the ones in Mando, that wasn't Babu Freak. He's but that's the same race. And just like that, them communicating, and, and yeah, the fact that he kept trying to pick him up, and he got mad at just no, stop, stop. <laughs> Has his hand out. And Carl just, Weathers is like repeating what translating. Yep. You know? so funny. So that was funny. so well. Well, then the other part, then which I caught it. Like I don't know if you guys noticed it too, but like it's the poke with those pirates. It's they're they're poking at Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh yes, because when when they first well when they first came out they the, I think it's the droid calls them Pirates of the Courtyard, <laughs> and the captain at the end and the captain at the end looks like Davy Jones. It's just plants <laughs> instead of an octopus. Yeah. Oh my gosh! The captain at the end, Gorian Shard, was played by Nanso Anuzier. He is in the show. Oh my gosh, I just Sweet Tooth. Isaac, are you the Sweet Tooth fan on the show? Oh, I I have not watched the entire show, but I I enjoyed what I did watch of it. And it's Mark. It's Mark. So he plays the main character in that show. Hmm. So I thought a, a nice aside. Again, this is what this show does. You have guest stars and you don't even know they're there. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just so good. Another sorry for cutting you off, Zane, but I wanted to make sure our audience. They, that. The Mandalorian has done celebrity cameos better than any show ever. Hundred percent. Yeah, like they they incorporate these like big names into these small roles, and it's not like it doesn't seem out of place. They seem like they're supposed to be there, and I think that's a that's a big thing with celebrity cameos is like you write this part just for them to be in the show. These are parts that are already written and they just put celebrities in those parts that that have done a fantastic job of just playing those minor roles. And it's it's so fun to see. Well, I think part of part of that, too, is just the fact that that just kind of shows how much reach Star Wars has that you can have some of these big name people that want, uh, will go and take this minor role in Star Wars because it's just like that's how many people like have grown up with it and know Star Wars and it, like have enjoyed it because it's just like. You get these names because it's like they like Star Wars and like, yeah, we're going to have you as some random silly character. And yeah, I think it just kind of speaks more on just how reaching some of this can be. He gets in the fight with the pirates. We talked about that. Then he gets in the fight in the air or in the air in space with the pirates (laughs) in the air and gets uh, has this conversation uh, with the uh, with the with the wing fighters, which I thought was really cool. And I really, really. Again, I just want to tip my hat to Pedro Pascal, who just acts with so little. He makes so much happen. And his dialogues, his tone is so good in these scenes where all it is is just the, the helmet goes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just small movements. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he's just masterful so at that. And I'm, I'm sure it's made him a better actor. And it crescendos to him heading up. Uh, to see Bo Katan again in an old Mandalorian castle, who reveals that after losing the dark saber, she was abandoned and uh, she can't reclaim Mandalore. Now she's all alone. And she suggests that he's going to have to travel alone because he's the one that carries it. And he has allegedly a whole fleet of people that will listen to him. I'm sure that will pop back up later down the line. Something tells me story wise, he's going to need it's that. possible. Kalevala, the name of the planet that Din Djarin and Grogu visit, is the name of an epic poem of Finland, a tale containing singing wizards and sea monsters. Sea mm-hmm. monsters. I didn't see any singing wizards in this, but maybe we'll see a singing wizard in the future. Zane, who do you want to be a singing wizard in the Star Wars universe right now? Go. Pick a now. Go. No, no, no. Go. Um, Pick an actor. Go. Any actor. Go. Isaac, Isaac Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. Great. Yes, okay. please, please <laughs> cast me. I'll do it. <laughs> and that's the scene. We didn't talk about the armor giving the the information. All she did was exposition in this, but Emily Swallow was back again. She's great as the armor. And that's about all I got. 
I've got I've got something that I, I want to talk about here. Yeah, so I, I was gonna say I, I was gonna say it's, <laughs> is it me and Isaac's turn to start throwing right. in pieces here? Max, Max, <laughs> take a seat. Here we go. Um, okay, so I want to say like I, I don't know if it's the beginning of the episode or it was when um, Mando and Grogu were going to uh, Bo Katan, uh, but there's a scene where they're traveling in the his starship and he goes into hyperspace. And the it pans back to oh, the spaceship, yes. the whales, and yeah, yeah. So we get a shot of these whales that are traveling in hyperspace, which is a reference to rebels. Um, these things are called pergol, and they're literally like space whales that can travel at hyperspace like speed. And that was just like, man, they are doing such an incredible job. And this is all Filoni, I'm assuming, because. He was the one that was the the front runner of of Rebels, which is the show that they're in. And for a little context for you guys that are not Star Wars fans, Purgle, these whales are the reason that Ezra um, is missing. At the end of the show, um, Ezra basically gets taken by these Purgle to who knows where. And I'm assuming that's where we're going to pick up with the Ahsoka uh, show that she's going to track down as Bridger. We'll probably find out a little bit more about that, but it's just so cool that Filoni has, um, you know, his, his hands on all these properties. And he, I mean, this guy was, you know, taken in and, and mentored by George Lucas himself. Like he knows what George Lucas is thinking. And he is, I mean, he absolutely has continued the, the vision that George Lucas has had. And, and I absolutely love that he's taken from these properties. We're going from animated into live action and, and, you know, vice versa, fantastic reference to uh, rebels, which I think is a top tier. If you guys have not watched rebels, it's a top tier star Wars property that everybody needs to see. I did have these, the, these whales in my notes. So I just skimmed over it. I apologize. Good job. Good job. To the, to the nasal breathers out there. I am sorry. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. My question that I wrote down with these was, is this confirmation that Ezra Bridger's in this season? That's a very, very good question. And I would not be shocked because the actor has already been cast for Ahsoka. Um, it was it was a while ago, like over, over a year ago now that he was cast. And I actually say being Wren has also been cast, I believe. So I would not be shocked if we see either of them in this season. Ezra, I feel like, I feel like it's more likely we see Sabine with her Mandalorian, you know, uh, background, but it would be sweet to see Ezra Bridger in this, just even as a, even as a reference, honestly, if we get Ahsoka again and, and she makes a reference to Ezra. I'd be totally fine with that. But either way, Ahsoka, um, I'd put her. my money on the table. Ahsoka's coming back. Zane, yeah. Ezra Bridger, is he back in this season? In this season, forgive me. Going back to kind of what I alluded to earlier of the giant quest, I think that turns into what the big quest of this season is them finding Ezra Bridger. Really? Yes. Do you think that's... he's hanging out in Mandalore? Is that what you're? I here? think when he goes, because remember when he's talking, when he finds that crystal or whatever with the writing on it, how he said he got it from Jawas, and the Jawas got it from some sort of trader that supposedly got it from Mandalore. Part of me was like, oh, I wonder if that's Ezra, but I think that would be later. I think when he goes to Mandalore, that it's Sabine that's there, and he finds Sabine. They team up. At, well, ultimately, I think if you stretch this out more. They eventually either have their fight. I think Sabine ends with the dark saber. That's how you get Bo-Katan back because she's following a Mandalore. She's not, you know, following, um, Jin because he's a son of the watch. Whereas Sabine's actually a child of Mandalore. And then I think that's how you unite everyone back together. You also have to unite everybody for some type of either movie TV show of some kind, right? You got to get everybody under one watch. How do you do that? This makes a lot of sense. Right. And I think you get all that back together because I think I don't think it's going to be in this, but I know it. it's going to be, I'm pretty sure it's going to accumulate in Ahsoka. Cause we already know that's what she's looking for from earlier. Thrawn's coming back. And I think that's what is going to end up ultimately being is you're going to have the kind of this ragtag of Jin 
you got the kind of the crew of the ghosts coming back because we know we're getting Hera, we're getting Sabine, get Katana, bring these, and then the battle that you're going to get is what Thrawn has reestablished. Because it's not just Ezra that disappears at the end of Rebels with the the Purgil, it's Thrawn too. Because Ezra and Thrawn, Ezra and Thrawn are fighting on the ship and then the Purgle grab the ship and jump into hyperspace. So you, that's why you don't see what happens to either of them. And so that's why then Rebels ends with Sabine, hey, we need to go find Ezra. And so I think that's the ultimate kind of quest on this. They find Ezra. And then the kind of the real the reveal at the end is, hey, you're also finding Thrawn. And then that's going to go into Ahsoka. They have to do a better job of explaining all this to the people like me. Because a lot of people that watch Mandalorian don't watch the rest of these properties. Now, I think they did a good job of that in Book of Boba Fett, really talking about the stakes of, hey, you took your helmet off. Here's why that's bad. Here's why you've got to go fix this. I really liked that. And it's simple, but I think that really led me well into season three. We've got to explain Thrawn, who is a big threat and villain. And I I I know enough about him that I'm I'm let's go. I'm game. That's what the Star Wars universe needs. It needs a ma- massive threat. Thrawn appears to be that, but it also needs another protagonist that can carry a lightsaber that's not Luke Skywalker. And so I think that is really where I'm hearing this well. And, and he's younger. He's younger than Ahsoka, who's who's now older in this part of the timeline. I think that's really good. And that's like going back, that's kind of the point of this is a new set of heroes that's not Skywalker, that's not Palpatine. Heroes, villains, that's the kind of the whole journey, you know, the ultimate goal of finding Ezra, but it's also establishing all these new heroes to continue your story forward. And that's kind of your ultimate journey. And not only that, but along the way is these episodes, like this journey can pan out of explaining some of that backstory of the people that didn't watch Rebels, of explaining the significance of Ezra, explaining the significance of Kane and Jarrus and what he meant to Ezra, explaining that's what season three has to do. That that's what th- that's what I'm the journey of season three explaining this, ultimately culminating in finding Ezra. Which is why the Mando story arc is perfect. It's small enough, but the stakes are personal in it. Additionally, Grogu is now the new R two D two slash C three PO of this universe. Right. He can live forever. And so he can move on with everybody else if if they decide to move on from Din Djarin. And if they want to move, if if he can just be passed along and grow as this goes. So I, I, I'm with you, Zane. I, this excites me. This really gets me jazzed. I'm like, wow, the stakes for Star Wars are, are Star Wars are there again. This is nice. And I think it was wise to connect it to Skywalker in the movies. I do think that was wise. I know people are like, oh, well, Skywalker's gonna be like. Stop. Luke Skywalker is one of the biggest protagonists in the history of cinema. You can't escape that shadow. Why not let him be engaged in some capacity in this? Why not let him be part of the movie or let him be part of the final episode and and fight alongside the dark saber, Ahsoka and her prime, uh, all these people against Thrawn? Why not? What's what's why can't we have that? That would be great. It tickles everybody's fancy. Okay. This is good. This is fun. Isaac, anything to add before we close? Yeah, I mean, I'm, again, just thrilled for the the whole season. I, I think, Zane, that was a really good point about um, how they could build up to Ezra in this. I, I still think Sabine is like the, like, she's probably, like, there's a good likelihood that Sabine is going to show up in the show. Ezra would be... Because I know they're going to focus on Ezra with the Ahsoka show. I feel like that would be less likely that he'll show up in this. But maybe it'll be like a final episode. Like that's when they find Ezra and Ahsoka will be the building of the team to take down Thrawn type of show. It could do kind of the old just even the the presence of Ezra. Like do the final shot where it's just him from the back. Or, the you know, like you don't actually have to give him like an actual purposeful like presence right. in this but just knowing that hey this is your end goal and then maybe you end that as you know him walking out of it the war or these just that final shot and then that's the end i haven't like it'll be it would be really interesting to i have not dove this deep into it but it would be really interesting to compare the timelines to see like how far in the future this is from rebels like how old is ezra gonna be now and then is ezra still gonna have a lightsaber that shoots 
like bullets or like pl- plasma <laughs> like things well, like, the that Ender, would be sweet. Ender Rebels that got destroyed but I mean he could very easily build another one oh that's right I, I was gonna say yeah. give I, I didn't even know he did that let's feed feed me let's do this <laughs> let's do I'm it. like excuse me yeah we could do that I'm all in on that it's very cool he yeah he combines a lightsaber and a blaster it's it's yeah it's what, awesome. what are we doing why is this not why has this not been done yet what is going on? <laughs> well, it has, but, uh, but I'm saying why, why hasn't it been done on this? <laughs> on that that's what I would like Agreed. it on. I would that's like what we want to see. I would like that's Grogu to, to have see. that. I'd like a smaller one <laughs> with oh, the blaster gosh. on it. That's what I would like. Just imagine Grogu in Mandalorian armor with a blaster lightsaber. Dude, it was adorable when that guy was again. I watched the Boba Fett episode yesterday, so this is fresh to me. He was flipping around on those rocks. Just oh hilarious, so cute and so funny. Just put it in my veins. I'm all Good in stuff. on that. <laughs> Good stuff. It's official, guys. We talked longer about this episode than the episode was itself. 50 minutes. Thank you for <laughs> doing that, guys. Really great. Uh, it was good. It was fun. It was real. And it's nice to have the Mandalorian back. Yes. Things feel it's right. So good. And uh, again, Pedro Pascal just living the dream. Every, he's got two big projects coming out every week. I mean, that guy must just be on cloud nine right now. Good for he's him. the dude. Zane, thank you for swinging by, buddy. Of course. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. Second time this week, man. I mean, you're just an animal. I mean, you're just nobody can do what you do. Call me butter. I'm on a roll. Don't drink any orange juice. That's a joke for the people that listen to Patreon. You can check out all the pre-show talk. We talked for 40 minutes on Patreon, a full hour and a half. If you want more content, check that out. Isaac, thanks for swinging by. Last plug I'll give uh, Pedro Pascal is he's the guy right now. Go watch Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. I knew you were going to say this. Because the dude has range. He is hilarious in that movie. Please go watch that movie. It's the meme going around right now and people like, don't even realize that's what it's from. So I was going to say every time I see that, not only do I think of you, I'm like, this is just Isaac. But every time they make those memes or those little gifts of it, I laugh at every, every single, single one. I don't even like half of them. I don't even know what they're talking about, but I still laugh because Pedro Pascal's goofy grin on his face. It's just that flip from Nick Cage. This is totally serious. <laughs> then to Pedro, just the, yeah, it's just, it's, it gets me every so single good. time. So good. It's so Pedro good. Pascal's the man. Pedro Pascal wills. Thanks for coming on Isaac. And thank you, Infinity Bros Universe, wherever you listen, however you listen. Thanks for making us part of your podcast experience and for letting us step into your Star Wars fandom. You can check out everything we talked about today in the show notes. Uh, There's links there to all of our other stuff, too. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can get connected in Discord. You can come check us out on Twitch. If you want to see great TikToks that don't have any followers, come on there. We have over almost we have half a million likes on TikTok. Thanks to Robbie and his hard work. So make sure you check that out. Robbie's putting a ton of great stuff out there. And uh, yeah, everything we've talked about is going to be in the show notes. You can also check out the previous episode this week. If you're a Last of Us fan and you're checking us out for the first time, I would encourage you to check out our review of that. We're going to start putting them, I think, either together. We'll we'll still decide. We're kind of still deciding how we want to do it. I like the separate episodes, maybe, if if one's your thing and the other isn't. But uh, either way, we're thankful and grateful for you. We love you 3000. We'll see you guys soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Infinity Bros Podcast. You can find the Infinity Bros on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Infinity Bros. Feel free to send listener feedback via email at infinitybrospodcast at gmail.com.